life-changing mission. Only 30% of Americans who are raised Catholic are still practicing, and by age 23, those who are thinking about leaving would have done so. In this week's feature, we introduce an organization who is successfully tackling this conundrum. I am Tessa Habet, and our feature story is brought to you by Brothers Habet Limited. March is Women's Month, and at Brothers Habet, we're celebrating our beliefs in women and their achievements all month long. Women are too often overlooked in typically male-dominated fields, but we want to celebrate the capable ladies who are breaking the bias across the board. From the women at home tackling their own home improvements, to our women builders behind new and exciting projects. We want to recognize your power and thank you for all your contributions to Belize. And as a small token of our appreciation, for the entire month of March, we're offering all women 15% off on all items in store so you can keep breaking glass ceilings with high quality products from Brothers to Bed. It's a great month to be a woman and a great time to come into Brothers to Bed and check us out for all your hardware needs. Happy Women's Month, Belize, and let's continue to break the bias. Focus. It's Fellowship of Catholic University students who share both the hope and the joy of the Gospel of Christ at the most pivotal time in their lives. I'm one of the national chaplains for Focus, the Fellowship of Catholic University students. And uh, one of my roles uh, within the organization is to support uh, missionaries. We have about 120 missions that we uh, send uh, missionaries and students to every year uh, in all five uh, continents. And the goal of our mission uh, trips is to uh, bring Christ uh, to the people and the faithful that we visit across the world. But also uh, the purpose of the mission it's not only, to, not only to serve, but also for the, the students and the missionaries to uh, experience Christ in the people. Um, and uh, that reinvigorates their, uh, their own faith. Uh, sometimes many students who experience the grace of God working in the hearts of the faithful and in their own hearts, uh, then desire to do more. I mean, as they experience how great it is to give of themselves on a mission trip, when they go back to the States, they, they want to do something else. They want to serve locally or even go on another mission. And even some of them become focused missionaries after they conclude their, their years of college. So it's, it's a great win-win for everyone. Uh, people in, in different countries get blessed by these mission trips and the missionaries and students that themselves get uh, reinforced and reinvigorated in their own faith. So I'm actually a college student at USC and um, our director, our team director, he's a missionary at USC with Focus. And um, he's the one who invited me to come here on this Focus mission trip. And if you really knew me, you would know that um, going on a mission trip is not something that you would think I would do because it is a, a little to a lot outside of my comfort zone. Um, but, um, it's been amazing to see how, as I've surrendered to what the Lord wants me to do, um, He's just given me this immense freedom. There's so much freedom in surrendering. I got involved in Focus when I went to school in Nebraska, at the University of Nebraska, and met some Focus missionaries at my college, and got involved in Bible studies. I went on a mission trip. Um, when I was in college and then decided to apply to be a Focus Missionary after I had graduated. It wasn't always a priority for me, mission. Um, I think in college I yeah, was focused on, on baseball and, and the party culture and just whatever made me happy at the time. Um, and through God's grace I went on a mission trip in 2018, my senior year, to Rome. and. Through encounters with people there, started to recognize that my identity was not as a baseball player or as a college student or even like as an American. It was as a son of God. And so that really like sparked something in my heart that wanted more. 
I wasn't really sure about mission trips like when I started college. Um, I didn't even think about it. I decided to join the Bible studies at the Catholic Center just because I'm Catholic and I wanted to grow more in my faith. I just didn't really know how, but I saw that USC was like advertising like a bunch of clubs and the Catholic Center was one of them. So um, like when, during one of my Bible studies, my one of the missionaries who leads them told us that there was multiple mission trips that the school was hosting and one of them was these. And that had hit me like, a little close to my heart because I have family in Belize. This is my first time in Belize and on a mission trip. I've always had this inclination to serve others and a sense like that's where I find the most joy is in building relationships with one another and I think learning from other people that way. I've grown to know God better through that. So in doing some service projects at home and whatnot and just having this desire to travel also and really experience God's creation in its fullness. So I've always wanted to go on a mission trip of this sort and it's a blessing to be able to come here. I met a focus missionary my sophomore year of college. I'm currently a junior and uh, I really wanted to like get to know Focus better. Wow, this is different than anything I've experienced. Um, the kindness of the people. I think that people were just welcoming us into the community. You know, I remember we went to Sunday Mass and I met you, um, but everybody else there, they just, even after, they just wanted to welcome us into their community. Um, and even the people we've met um, as we've gone around and gone door to door have just been super friendly. Um, even when we can't always communicate because we don't know Spanish that well, they're still very friendly. So that's been my first impression. Um, like leading up to this trip, I was getting like, overwhelmed because it's actually my first time flying out of like the US and it's crazy my first time is here in Belize where my family's from like my family's home country so like being here it's like so surreal it feels at times I'm like I forget I'm in Belize just because of how comfortable it is here like I feel like it's like another home even though I've never been here before and like the people here like are so wonderful they're so loving they're so generous they're so like inviting it's like I don't feel like a stranger here. It feels like I'm like knowing these people in my whole life, like the people I've been seeing, interacting with. It's just an amazing experience so far. I think what really sets Belize apart is um, how many like different nationalities there are within the country. After I graduated college, I did work in the workforce for a year back in Nebraska. Um, I worked in like a corporate job, got paid a nice salary, all of that stuff. Um, but I knew I was that there was like still something missing and a desire in my heart that hadn't been touched yet. And before I, I got that job, I had thought about being a missionary, but I was very scared <laughs> because we fundraise our salaries. Um, I was scared of what my family would think. Um, I was scared of the lie of like wasting my education that I just got a diploma for. Um, I was scared of giving up control because you have no say in where you go when you become a missionary. You basically sign a waiver that's like, I'll go anywhere in the United States. So I was like, what if I get sent somewhere horrible? <laughs> um, so that held me back for, for a year that I worked. I worked, yeah, for six months on and then I had six months off. And so in those off times was when I would go on these trips and travel and stuff, but I always tried to refill myself with the sacraments. I tried to go to adoration more, I tried to go to church more because we didn't really have that opportunity when we were working. Um, and over the course of like four years and two mission trips, just recognizing that like this job had everything I thought I wanted, I had. Um, I was doing something I felt like I was good at. It was physically exerting, which I liked and enjoyed. Um, as my time as an athlete concluded, just having that outlet. We all wonder uh, uh, like what, what it is that fulfills us and gives us that joy. And when you see people who truly embody that, that joy of Christ, it's attractive and people want that. And I think that's what drew me to it as well. I've learned
learned that the Lord's really asked me to lay down my will. Um, because His will for all of us is so much greater than, He wants so much better for all of us than we want for ourselves. And so uh, I think He's been asking me to lay down my will and surrender that to Him um, because His will is so much better. You know, it says in Matthew um, 6 33, I believe, to seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things that we think that we want or need will be given to us, but according to God's good will for us. You know, He wants to give it to us, but He also wants us to seek first His kingdom and His will. Um, and so I think that that's what He's really been uh, asking me to do in this trip lay down my will for a different spring break or my will um, to do this or do that, just to do what He wants me to do. I do believe that this trip has helped me grow closer to Him just because the amount of time I spent praying like about this trip, because I don't know what was to come out of it. It's my first time out of the country, it's my first time on a mission trip, it's my first time doing something this big of a project like humanitarian wise. And I've never gone to like Mass every day or like do adoration every day. So it's like a whole, it's like spiritually overwhelming but in a good way. The biggest thing for me was just being removed from my day to day and a lot of the distractions and coming to somewhere far away and finding common ground like yesterday when we were playing with the kids and seeing their joy in these sports and that language that's universal. Um, just finding common ground through activities and, and movement and ultimately the Lord uh, is always really encouraging and seeing students who have never been outside the country or maybe their worldview is like very small at this point in their lives, um, 18, 19, 20 years old. Seeing them experience something that's so different from their day to day and how the Catholic Church is so universal amongst that is really inspiring. Already my heart's transforming in the way that I'm coming to know God's love for myself better and seeing the love that He has for the people that I'm encountering and in a sense, like, I'm able to share His love with others, but in a much greater sense, I'm seeing His love through them. So everyone who I've encountered really solidifies, like, my purpose and that I feel as being here is to share the love of our Father and to really build relationship with one another and to see everyone that I meet as a son or daughter of Christ and for them to see me in that way as well. It's been beautiful to see us, like, these relationships blossoming, rooted in that love. My family always had the saying in Spanish, Dios sabeta pero no aborta. So like you don't know Spanish, it means like, it may feel like God is strangling you, but he's not trying to choke, he's not trying to hurt you. It's just things get a little tough sometimes. So that's something my family has always said when things feel like there's no hope. Just as a little reminder that God is with you no matter what. Like you may be have hit rock bottom. God is with you no matter what. It might take time, but like it will come, like good things will happen. And it's like when I'm seeing right now because everyone has their own struggles or journeys. I, like because of my mom and how hard she's worked in the U.S., it's like I've never had to struggle for money and stuff, but I've also had like mental and emotional, spiritual struggles where I feel like I just might not, I just might lose hope, lose faith, just give up because things aren't going the way I intended them to go. Well then just that reminder like in the end like God will never intentionally try to make you suffer because you're his child, he loves you, and things will be okay. It's just you have to trust, like have trust in things, have trust in life, have trust in God. Like don't have trust in yourself as well that you will make it through it. Like, because giving up is like predicting the future, and we don't know the future yet. For me personally, uh, the Lord has called me to mission in some form of uh, youth ministry and He's just opened my eyes that even more while I've been here so I'm so thankful um, to Him for that um, and uh, in terms of just other mission, things that I've learned from the mission um, just 
that doesn't like knocking on doors and like reaching out to people and sharing the Lord with them that doesn't have to stop ever like it doesn't it's not something that begins when you start on mission and then ends when you and the mission ends the mission is our lives you know so every day reaching out to people whether you're you go into a hotel lobby and you're you meet the person at the front desk there you know that's an opportunity to share with them how much Jesus loves them you know and or you're sitting on a bus you know and sitting next to somebody you know um, because um, someone one of my friends gave me the analogy one time you know it's like if if someone was in a desert you know the driest desert out there and needed water you know and that's what it is for a lot of people that's the reality of their lives they're in a really dry desert and we by God's grace have that water and we have the ability to share that with them by sharing the person who gives us that water which is Jesus start with the small things because the small things will build up to larger things. Like, take the time to really show genuine interest in what another person has to say um, and to show concern for them and smiles go a long way. Um, make people seen and heard by saying their name. A lot of people don't hear their own name a lot. Um, and being a psychology student, like I've learned how important that is. Don't be afraid to just step out of where you're comfortable and um, try one time going to Mass, maybe on an extra day, or go, if you don't even go to Mass on Sundays, just start going um, and see, yeah, see what, see what there is and, and be able to celebrate the beauty that is Jesus and know that it's just like, yeah, an hour of your life for that one day and you have truly nothing to lose, um, but so much to gain. And I think it's in one of the Gospels, or somewhere in the Bible. I think it may be St. Paul says, like, I don't want to gain the whole world if I lose my soul. And so this is a, be a beautiful way to, to sanctify your soul. Um, and yeah, you truly don't have anything to lose. So. I was kind of doubting my faith in the sense, like, there has to be a deeper like meaning to all of this that I'm learning in school and I started spending time in Jesus's Eucharistic presence every day for the most part. Um, I was blessed with an adoration chapel nearby my school so I would go there and really just spending time with Jesus is the best way to come to know him better and your plan, his plans for you. Um, those have been revealed to me through the times that I've spent with him um, sitting in adoration and truly just like sit like sometimes there's times where I'm like I don't know what to say I don't know what to pray about I don't even know if God's listening or if he's there and I can tell you he is and just sitting in his presence allowing him to work through you and to talk to you and especially like just opening your eyes to him in every circumstance I would say like making every action that you do a prayer and seeing the way that God reaches you through the people that you encounter and the places and just acknowledging his presence and my encouragement for um finding that joy right now um, to anybody who's seeking it out in whatever way it may be is that if it's not found in the Lord it's not going to fulfill you and so just recognizing that as a starting point and I think um, anybody who's felt like that can point to times in their life where they thought that if they would just get this one thing then they would be happy and then it always led to something more and something more and the truth is it, it always will lead to something more because we're trying to fill a hole that's meant for God with all these other things. Um, so the first practical step would be to pray and just to recognize that God is our Father who is a loving and good Father who wants a relationship with us. And so trusting Him with those deep desires of our heart because He's not going to force Himself on us, um, but he, he wants us to respond to, to that love that He's given us. And prayer is the start of that relationship. It's the communication. Like he's given us his word in the Bible. He's given us these churches and, and the sacraments and everything. And it's up to us to respond to that. And I think just like any relationship, it can't be one-sided. And so for us to respond, especially as men in this church um, who are called to be leaders and have that sense for adventure, um, the response is key. And that starts with daily prayer, even if it's just 15 minutes a day. And then eventually you'll find that you'll want more and you'll want more and you'll want more. And it's just a conversation, just a conversation with a loving father who wants a relationship with us. 
It is uh, very important to, uh, it was very important for people to meet Jesus because Jesus is the, the purpose of our lives. I mean, we are uh, brought into this world, we are created by, by God uh, for a relationship. And actually the word religion means that, to reconnect, to reconnect us with God. And Jesus is God himself coming into this world to reconnect us with, with Christ, we are, we are made for our relationship with God the Father, with Jesus Himself, and with the Holy Spirit. So uh, bringing Christ, the message of Christ, to uh, the faithful and the people here in Belize uh, encourages them to, to move towards what they are made for. They are made for a relationship, they are made for a friendship, they are made for love, and love is Jesus Christ Himself. And not only this is uh, a blessing for them individually, but as we live this life of, as missionaries, we are following the uh, commandment of Jesus, the, the divine commission of going into the whole world. Uh, we really want to reach the whole world for Christ so that people may come to know Him. Uh, we, we really want to reach uh, not just uh, one city or, or one country, we want to reach the whole world. And that is something that we can uh, do all together is if we dedicate ourselves to a few and those few dedicate themselves to other few and that starts like a kind of a ripple effect and that's what Jesus did with the apostles and with the disciples and that's how the church grew and that's how we are supposed to what we're supposed to do to reach this generation uh, of people in the world because each generation is responsible for its own generation and, and those who will come after us will be responsible for the next generation but our our responsibility is to come to know Christ, to, to be known by Him, to, to love Him, and to, uh, to let Himself be known by so many who are uh, thirsting for that uh, light, we can say, of faith and that warmth of love that Jesus Christ uh, has come to bring to them. of Catholic University students for sharing the hope and joy of the gospel with us. May the message of Christ spread throughout the earth, bringing transformation to all who hear his voice. And that's our feature. Thanks for watching. This was a Guadalupe Media production. For this and more feature stories, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or view on Guadalupe Media Channel 96 on CCV or Channel 64 on CBC. You can also tune in on the radio in your car, home, or office at 101.9 FM, and please be sure to download the Guadalupe Media radio app from Google Play or the App Store. Our Blessed Mother, lead us to Jesus.